I thought I was going to go back to Florida. And I really did plan to go back to Florida. But then I realized that there are things that I'd learned during the times that, that I was in Florida with the community service uh, that I had there working on the bank boards. Uh, I'm on the university board, still on the board of the, of the Tier 1 University in Florida. Uh, I was on chamber boards. I was appointed by the governor, Governor Martinez, to, to serve as chairman of the South of Florida Water Authority to look at a reliable source of water uh, for the Florida County. All of that is not important to say, except to say, what have I learned in another location to see what other people have done to see what we can do in this area. And so as I understood that I would be able to contribute something uh, to this area from the lessons that I learned in other places, I became very excited about the opportunity to, uh, to serve my community here. About two years ago, uh, I started off kind of on my own and, uh, and I went to Guy Bar first, and uh, then Clyde White, and uh, John Mark Will Height, and, uh, and, uh, and, and a bunch of community people put together about 20, and then she grew up to 40, and very, very slowly, community leaders, to look at what we could do for economic development uh, in our community. And so for two years, we've had some very uh, dramatic successes uh, in I mean, not, not just plans, but successes and things that we can do for workforce, uh, industrial parks, uh, research parks, uh, beautification, uh, uh, looking at what we can do with uh, making our, uh, our medical systems better, uh, looking at all aspects. And, and one of these things, that they weren't just ideas, we were you know, doing these things. Joe Holyfield told me that. He thought that I created more excitement in the business community about what this community could be since the whole time that he'd been here. And several business uh, people felt the same that, that, that I created a, a, some ideas in the environment uh, that people could be excited about. But what can Monroe be? What can we do? And it is really exciting. It'll take you about three hours to, to, to go into even an outline the things that we put out, and we, you don't have time to uh, talk to anybody who wouldn't listen to that. I, I do it again. But there are wonderful opportunities about what we, can, what we can do. I started out and asked the question first, Century Link has said that we have 10 years uh, to convince them to stay here. And he asked them, what, if, what do they want? And the things that they want, except for maybe one thing, are the things that we would all want, the things that are, that are good for our community in any case. And the first one is, is, is schools, and address schools and the better schools. As they say, when they attract people from, uh, from Denver or from Little Rock, from Kansas, whatever, and they read the newspaper and they see you know, some of the problems we have with our schools, they don't want to come here. And if you go to the grocery store and you go to restaurants and you pick out these young kids, and, and you, you can tell them you know, what they're working and what their way through school. And you ask them, what are you doing? And they tell you, uh, are you going to stay here in the world? I said, no. I taught a class at ULM, and there were about 40 kids in the class. And I started out and asked them, the kids there, how many of you are going to stay here in the world? And two people said yes. And I said, we're going to that's a problem. And we need to, we need to address it. We need to address our schools. We need to address so many things uh, in, in the city of Monroe to try to understand the problems that we have. The thing that CenturyLink wants are very much the same thing that we want in schools. We need to straighten out the problem with the, with the schools. The next thing they want is a more beautification, uh, and they want a, a better infrastructure. The other things that they want, that are, those are problems that we can help them solve as well. If they want a direct flight from Monroe to, uh, to Denver, uh, I don't know that I can help them with that. I mean, I, I'd love to in any way that we could. And then they have another issue relative to traveling spouses. They will hire uh, top executive people, and their wives may have a job. So when they come here to Monroe, they cannot find a job here. So some of them uh, do not take the jobs because there's not a job to the training spouse. So we've worked on the issues for 
the trail of the spouse uh, through the chamber of commerce and see the CBD and the three weeks on as well. There's the channel with your jobs, but if there aren't jobs, there are jobs. And so what we have to do is to try to uh, uh, develop the jobs, get more jobs, meaningful jobs here. But to me, the most important thing that we have for the city of Monroe is to retain its history. And that opportunity will come back. We lost State Farm. Why did we lose State Farm? Uh, we lost uh, the opportunity for the next car. I'm not sure if that's directly involved with that, but that, 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 that other issues here. But the Central Link, we're at real risk of losing Central Link. And I think that we must do something to try to preserve Central Link and, and to make sure it stays here. One of the best things that ever happened in Maryland, one of the greatest disasters we'll ever face with our jobs and opportunities at work. But there are some exciting things that can be done. There, there are companies now that are following Century Lake because they're the third largest telecommunications company in this country. And so they're coming here. And they want to open up some opportunity, they want to open up manufacturing positions here. We need to help them to accommodate them to be uh, there are some very specific plans on, on, on trying to do that. How exciting would it be for all of us to pick up the newspaper one day and see uh, a plan for uh, a, a mixed-use site uh, somewhere uh, that's qualified uh, for uh, industrial parks, research parks, residents, uh, schools, uh, arts, uh, and all the outside of that we and keeping people here. But that's, that's realistic. That's, that, that is possible. We can't do that. It sounds like a pipe dream. We can do it now. So that, those are some of the ideas, some of the challenges that I think that we, that we face and going forward. And so my primary decision to do this is based on what can the world be done and everything we can do. So that was my decision to run. But, but as I get into this race, people come forward with things that are systemic, that are public, and proper, and I don't even need to do that. We all know some of the other issues that we face. So uh, that's why I'm running. And, uh, so that's part of my vision for well, we're going to do got some questions. This is the main thing. If you have some questions from the floor, somebody got some ideas, ask you what ideas that you have. Joe Howard, are you always loaded? Now, I can tell by the thoughts that in your brain right now. You got a question? You want You're to talking about systemic problems and everything. What about, uh, is there any way to get the employment laws changed in Louisiana? That's one of the biggest <coughs> Okay. <laughs> I don't know if it's deployment laws, but I'll find out. Well, mostly just a statement, uh, Dr. Armstrong, uh, what you said about century link uh, prioritizing schools is number one. You know, I think the parish system is doing a pretty good job. The Monroe City schooling system is just it works. And and it it just I don't see how it's going to get him back. And if, and if Century Link's looking at it, um, they gone. <laughs> well, they're, they're maybe, maybe not. And there are some things that can be done. I went over to Ruston with Bob Weber to look at some of the new tech high schools. Uh, and uh, so Bob Weber was playing two new tech high schools, one of them was the and the other was the rest of the and then I talked with, uh, with Dr. Weber and with Dr. Robbins at the Delta Community College about doing another uh, professional high-tech school at the, at the Louisiana Delta. Uh, that would be unique. You, you, you'd actually bring kids in from all over the parish. And by the time they finish high school, uh, some of these kids can enter the junior and college. And so you need uh, uh, agreements and arrangements with uh, uh, from career technical faculty and high schools and, and with the Delta.
everything and the URL and everything. But that can be done. And that, that is underway uh, as we speak. Uh, essentially, uh, they don't really want everything. A lot of people know it, but everybody knows it. Anyway, they're talking about it. They, uh, they'll put millions of dollars into the charter state. And uh, that might solve some of the problems, but we need to solve all of them. And, and you know that it's difficult. Because the uh, school system has autonomy. Uh, they have their own source of funding and they have autonomy for city government. City should see what they need to do with them. So that's part of the problem. But there are things that can be done uh, to work with the students to, to try to improve the students. Well, it's just, you know, money, more money is not the answer. We, we, we're, we're comfortable with this. We are at more than adequately funded. The Monroe City School System is just, it's, it's rotten at the top. I'm about to say it's rotten at the top. I mean, it's just, uh, you know, we all had great hopes on Dr. Harris, and she apparently is anything but what we want. And, uh, and with, the, with the racial mix on the city school system, Board. I just don't see it getting any back. And, 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 and we can wring our hands and stuff like that, but it's, um, I just don't see any way. I, I cannot throw my hands up, and, and, and you, you, you may be right, but I, I want to disagree with that, and you want me to disagree with that. I don't know what can be done, but, but I, I know that there is enough. Uh, of an influence that the city would have in, in being able to do something and I would do everything that I've managed to do. I have a question. Well, it's kind of fun. You talked about the employment, you talked about um, like some children bringing in the family that's in and their spouses aren't able to find jobs. Okay, I work for Manpower and our staff and the recruiting agency. Why isn't it in place then if the city is that they send some of these um, disabled 